Listen, I, I have to warn you, we don't, have, we don't have any gifts for you, no giveaways. Here we have no chocolates, uh, you know, no free chicken, there is no t-shirts, uh, no hats, no refrigerators, no beautiful models, no musical bands, no talent, nothing. However, if you do hang around, you'll see, you'll see effort. Effort from a desperate, sweaty man who just wants to make it through. Just like you do. I know I'm not good, but gosh darn, I'm relatable. And speaking of relatability, today is the first day of the International Flirting Week. To be honest, I've never heard about this one before, so I, I actually didn't believe my eyes when I saw it. Really? Um, at first I was thinking it was like, you know, International Flirting Week, but uh, it's, you know, first, our show is too classy for jokes like this, and B, it would be like every other week for me. So, yeah, relatability. You know what? I, I digress for a minute. This weekend, a very, you know, very relatable thing happened to me. I was getting out of the taxi with a bunch of stuff, you know, bags and packages in my hands. So, I was going out of the taxi, um, my rear end first. And it was right outside of the house where I live. So, I was getting out of the taxi. Uh, and here is my butt was, you know, right out of the car like that. And there was no one on the street at this moment. Or I thought so. So a noise happened, a very loud noise. And just then, at this very moment, my neighbor walked out of the house. And the noise I made was unmistakable. It couldn't be anything else. And all she did, she went like, oh, good morning to you. So either when I make a noise, it sounds like good morning, or she's just very tactful and classy, just like our show. So yeah, it's not, not International Flirting Week, it's International Flirting Week, where we are all supposed to flirt internationally, I believe. So what is flirting anyway? Flirting is when you smile and say hello? No, that's not really flirting. Flirting is when you smile and say hello when you're not wearing pants. People flirt, you know, in different ways, of course, but it all boils down to body language. The experts say that when a woman, you know, plays with her hair, she's probably flirting or has fleas. It probably goes down to the times when we were monkeys, you know, when a woman would be grooming herself for mating, so you have to be careful when she starts throwing poop at you. Anyways, according to, according to studies, uh, raising eyebrows and laughing, that means I have intense feelings. So if you are talking to someone and they're doing this, <laughs> That means I have intense feelings, or I just stopped taking my medications. And the thing is, the body language is different depending on where you go in the world. For example, in Tibet, if a person does this, they're happy to see you. And in Greece, if a person does this, they're insulting you in no uncertain way. And in Russia, if a person does this, she may be host a quiz show on Wednesdays. There's also another study. About 40% of women admit that they flirt. As someone who never succeeded in their relationships for any length of time, I surely want to talk about that. In Russia, men do not flirt. They just don't know how. The man's idea of flirting in Russia is, you know, puking on someone's shoes and that's it. But I'm not like that. I'm doing dirty jokes all the time, implying, you know, doing hints and innuendos. And don't be mistaken, I'm puking too, so I'm kind of a total package, all in one. But when I flirt with a woman, I have an objective. I want something, you know, I'm not a window shopper, I want something in that damn store. It's all in the human history, I believe. Men and women, they just do not communicate like that. Back in the cave time, all the flirt with a woman was run-ups, grabbing her hair, dragging her in your cave, and that's pretty much it. Those were the days. Then in the Middle Ages, the art of flirt evolved. You wanted to flirt with a girl, you got yourself a big lance, you killed her boyfriend, you burned down her village, and then she knew you were interested. Now in the modern times, things are much more complicated. Some dangerous sexual politics are all around now. If you flirt at work, you can get a big, in, in a big trouble. You get sued you know, for sexual harassment. You gotta be careful because you can, get, you can go to the jail with flirting. And then in jail, the flirting is completely different. These days, people flirt using text messages on their phones. Yeah, a lot, a lot of girls do that because women will say things in the text messages that they would never dare to say out loud. It's true. That's the difference between men and women. Men want to see their, their porn and women 
they want to read their porn. Nowadays, people happen to flirt even while you know while they're in the cars. You know, you're driving and uh, and hmm, hey, or you know maybe maybe it's even better to make it look accidental, like you're in the car and you're trying to you're looking for something. That, oh, 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 and then your your neighbor comes out and see you. So here's a man women advice. You got to be careful. You happen to get if you happen to get, you know, past this flirt and you are in the relationships with someone. Here's the thing. If if a guy says to a woman that he wants to be friends, he wants to sleep with you unless he has already slept with you and then he says he wants to be friends. Then it means he wants to break up with you. If a woman says she wants to be friends, she means there's still a possibility she might sleep with you, but you, you might have to work for it. There are others who may be in line ahead of you, so please stay on the line. Your sex is important to us. Your call will be answered in the order in which it was received. And you know what else will be answered? Your prayers for money. Show them our prize fund. Come on. And now it's time to try your imagination. A smartphone on the palms of my hands. So here's the phone, and on the screen of your smartphone, there will be a question. After it appears, you'll have like 12 seconds to decide which of the following three answer choices is correct, in your opinion. So you made your decision, then tap the button with the correct answer in all the 12 questions, 12 rounds that we have for you tonight. And what, uh, it's okay to be wrong at least once, because, because from the start of the game you have a bonus life, but uh, you, can, you can have more of them, so you should bring some friends in the game. So, as, as many friends as you brought in, that's how many lives you can get, that's, that's pretty much it. So, you can't use, by the way, you can't use your extra bonus life for the final round during the 12th question, and you can only use these uh, extra bonus lives in the quantity of two during one broadcast. No more. All the other bonus lives that you've got from before will move on with you to our next broadcast. Let's take a look at our viewer count. Yeah, we was a little late today. Sorry. So right now we are watched by 1,794 people online. Thanks for being here with us no matter what. So that's a great day for IQ Option, and it's a great day to expand your financial knowledge, and therefore it's time to play the game. Here comes question number one. An amount of money that is paid into a bank account is called deposit, withdrawal, or Bitcoin. So yeah, we just started right here. Yeah, like, you know, two or three, maybe four seconds ago, maybe six seconds ago, we just started. And you have like, I don't know, four or maybe three or maybe two seconds to, to, to join us. So join us or, or just go away, like we never went on the air. So hmm? are you with us? That's great. That's a great decision. So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, a form of electronic cash. The act of taking money, money from a bank account or the amount you take out is a withdrawal. An amount of money that is paid into a bank account is a deposit. So 1,580 people knew the correct answer. That's actually pretty good for, for this day. You know what I mean? Such days. So here comes question number two. All right, that's the short what's the short name for the U.S. Federal Reserve System? FBI, Fed, pretty simple on these stages of the game, you know, so we don't, we want you to, to get upset or to get mad, ah, oh, why these things are so, so hard, and questions too, so, it's so simple here. FBI stands for the Federal Bureau of Investigations and is the Domestic Intelligence and Security Service of the United States of America. FedEx or FedEx Corporation is an American multinational courier delivery services company. The short word FED stands for the Federal Reserve System and is very widely used by mass media. 
And the correct answer to this question was clear to 1042 people. Thank you for being so so clear, you know? Answer was clear to 1000 and you are clear as <laughs> Thank you. Here comes question number three. A reduction in the value or price of something is called depreciation, liquidity, or bankruptcy. And now, isn't my new thing? Mm. You know, while declaring the third as a choice, I'm doing this. Mm. Yeah, I, I already can see it on the chat. That's the best thing that I ever come up with. Thank you. Liquidity describes the degree to which an asset or security can be quickly bought or sold in the market without, you know, without affecting the asset's price. Bankruptcy is the state of being unable to pay your, your debts. A reduction in the value or price of something is depreciation. And 1,044 people knew the correct answer. And that's, we're still over 1,000. And that's, that's actually very good. Thank you. And here comes question number four. Which of these is a telecom? Netflix, Autodesk, or Verizon? It's actually another thing, you know. During the previous question, I used this one. You see that? This one. And now I'm using this one without my thumb. New question, new me. Autodesk is an American multinational software corporation that makes software services for the architecture, you know, engineering, construction, manufacturing, media, and entertainment industries. Uh, Netflix is an American media services provider. Verizon is the largest wireless telecommunications provider in the United States of America. So, yeah, the correct answer to this question was clear to 805 people. And please let me remind you that if you gave a wrong answer, you still have like five seconds after that to bring yourself back into the race. You see this, this thing here? Just tap it and you're back in. You're welcome. Question number five. Is a large, usually family-owned business group in South Korea is called Sheibol, Hanja, or Zeibatsu. Yeah, some foreign history lessons here on geographic, you know, you know, some facts here. That's what I want to see. Anything on the chat? Hello, 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 said Humo, Humo SLP. Maybe that's just a quotation from Motorola commercials from 2004. Or maybe this person just wanted to greet us here. Hello, anyway. Hanja is the Korean name of the Chinese characters, you know, incorporated into the Korean language with the Korean pronunciation. Zeibatsu is a Japanese term referring to industrial and financial business conglomerates in the empire of Japan whose influence and size allowed control over significant parts of the Japanese economy. The word shebal is used to describe a large industrial conglomerate that is run and controlled by an owner or, or family in South Korea. And 405 people knew the correct answer. Thank you very much, our viewers from South Korea. Here comes question number six, I believe. Spreading risks by investing in a range of investment tools is called amortization, diversification, or recession. Yeah, things get serious here. Mm. Now, the better for the later. Dream of the crop. So, a condition in which the total real GDP of an economy shrinks usually for at least two consecutive quarters, is called a recession. A situation in which the value of intangible assets such as patents or falls because of their age or how much they have been used is amortization. Spreading risk by investing in a range by you know a range of investment tools is 
diversification and 400 and let me check 60 460 people knew the correct answer thank you very much for being one of those 660 people 460 people <sighs> i failed here anyways thank you here comes question number seven so another term for a flat market is bull market bear market or deer market <laughs> I have no idea about bull market, but another name for bear market is bear back market, and for deer market is cuckold market. Anyways, a bull market is the condition of a fin uh, financial market uh, of a group of securities in which prices are rising or are expected you know, to rise. A bear market is a condition in which uh, securities prices fall 20% or if more from recent highs amid widespread pessimism and negative investor sentiment. A dear market is a slang term for an investment market that has low trading volume and little movement either up or down. A dear market is a flat market. And to, oh, only 230 people knew the correct answer. Guys, I know you can do better, so smart up. Come on, show your best during the next question, the question number eight. The currency of Liechtenstein is franc, kron, or euro? And here, here comes the third thing of this broadcast. Do you remember that? We had this one, we had this one, and now the third one. Yeah, I'm getting better with every, every new thing here. So the crown is the currency of Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Iceland, Czech Republic, and some other territories. The euro is the official currency of 19 of 28 member states of the European Union, as well as some of the territories of the EU. The currency and legal tender of the currencies. In the past, he praised Bitcoin in particular for its utility as a store of value. In May of 2018, at We Are Developers Tech Conference in Vienna, Austria, Ethereum was described as a platform that was just like apples. Steve Wozniak said that Ethereum could be the next apple. And 199 people, 99 people knew the correct answer. And please let me ooh, yeah, remind you that if you gave a wrong answer, you have like five seconds to bring yourself back into the game. If you have this thing right here in the left corner or in the right for you, maybe. So people are different, you know. So you push, you just tap this thing and you are back in. So come on, if you gave a wrong answer, that's actually a solution. Question number number 10 is here. This is not a volatility indicator. Average true range, Bollinger Bands, or detrended price oscillator. Let's take a look at our chat and there is nothing again. Please say hello to me, someone. Please, I'm drowning here. Your hello can help me. <sighs> Average true range is a technical analysis volatility indicator originally developed by J. Wells Wilder for commodities. Bollinger Bands are a type of statistical chart characterizing the prices and volatility over time. A detrended price oscillator is not a momentum indicator, it is an oscillator that strips out price price trends in an effort to estimate the length of price cycles from peak to peak or trough to trough. And 121 people knew the correct answer. And yes, I did see your hellos there. William M. Hello. Hello, William M. And a couple of others, you know, hellos. They, they, are, they are here in my memory. I saw you. I will remember you. Question number 11 is here. <laughs> Which of these companies is owned by BMW, Audi, Rolls-Royce, or Volkswagen? Is that the fourth thing? I don't know. Huh? It would be nice if we, we have this thing as a, as a 
12th question. What was the fourth thing in the previous episode? This one, this one, or this one? Oh, dreams. Volkswagen is the founding and namesake member of the Volkswagen Group, a large international corporation in charge of multiple car and truck brands, including Audi, Seat, Porsche, Lamborghini, Bentley, Bugatti, Scania, Man, and Skoda. Rolls-Royce is a British luxury automobile maker. It is wholly owned uh, subsidiary of German group BMW. And, oh, take a look here. Only 42 people knew the correct answer, and I, I, have, I have no choice but to declare this one a hard question. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'm so stupid. I called the tough question the hard question. It was so bad. I believe I'll be sued for that. Anyways, you know, that's, that was question number 11, and so maybe here's the final spot where you can use... So yeah, just come on, use that. If... Question number 12, the final one. <clears throat> when did the In Gut We Trust motto first appear on the US dollar? 1792, 1861, or 1864. So I pretty much remember this time. The summer, the summer of 78. But <clears throat> now, 61 is actually sounds pretty good. You know, there's a lot of good things happen on 61. I do remember that, but that couldn't be George Washington. He died so much earlier. A blanket? Maybe. I don't know. So, in 1792, the United States Congress created the United States dollar as the country's standard unit of money by passing the first Coinage Act. Southern ministers uh, encouraged Treasury Secretary Salmon P. Chase in 1861 to inscribe In God We Trust on coins, and Congress approved uh, and first used the phrase on the two-cent coin in 1864. And the phrase has appeared on paper, on paper currency since 1957. So the correct answer to this question was clear to 70 people. And these people will share our Grand Prix of $1,000. So each and every, am I right? Each and every one of you. The best William Shatner I've ever done. So each and every one of you smart fellows will get $14.29. Isn't that incredible? It is. All the guys in the studio, they just said it is. So here's the point where I should call you amazing, but you know what? I'll call you internationally flirtable and poop thronely attractive. And that's it. Yeah, from now on, you are legally internationally flirtable and poop thronely attractive. And to prove that, we will show your nicknames. That's right, yeah, you can see your nicknames on the screens of your smartphones. So, that's pretty much it. Once again, we'd like to congratulate you on winning some money. 14 bucks and 20, 29 cents also. It is actually nice at any time. So, congrats, guys. Thank you for your attention and thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your luck and thank you for your well-deserved success. Thank you for joining us during this broadcast and see you next time. And as always, never stop thinking and see you later. Goodbye, everybody.